Hello and welcome to the Brian Voice. I'm Randy Seaver. Today I'd like to come to you um, very apologetically and I'd like to talk to you about the subject why I have decided to reject Calvinism. And the reason is I've been, I've been spending time watching Dr. Leighton Flowers on his uh, broadcast, Soteriology 101, and I, I've come to understand some things that for, for the last 50 years I have just been completely and absolutely wrong about. I, I, I was reared in a, a Southern Baptist church and during my formative years. I was about 16 years of age when my father uh, left the Southern Baptist Convention and became uh, an unaffiliated Baptist pastor. He never liked the idea of uh, uh, independent fundamentalist Baptist, but he was unaffiliated. And, um, you know, my, I, had, I had these heroes in the fundamentalist uh, movement and I went away to a, a, a fundamentalist school in South Carolina, and, and, and during my freshman year, I was introduced to uh, Calvinism. I was introduced to the doctrines of grace, and I was initially very put off by it, and I was angry about the whole idea. And I began to study, and um, over the next two years, I came to an understanding, I thought, of of um, what Calvinists believe, and I embrace the doctrine, and, and that's been many, many years ago. I, we're talking about um, over 50 years now, and um, I have tried to be faithful to what I believe Calvinists taught, um, uh, and I've tried to be faithful to what I believe the Bible taught, and, and, and but, but I've been listening to Dr. Flowers, and Shoot, every time I listen to him, I, I get more and more enlightened about what Calvinists believe. And, and from what he's telling me, Calvinists don't believe anything like what I've always been taught or what I've read. And I've, I've listened, I've read extensively in, in uh, Reformed theology, and uh, I, I graduated. My, my terminal degree is from Westminster Theological Seminary, uh, where I received a THM degree. And... Um, Man, I you know I read Ritterboss and Voss and I, I read all those guys and and I've you know I've read carefully the Canons of Dort and the Westminster Confession of Faith, and I really I really believe that's what Calvinists believed. I, I don't know I don't know how I could have been so stupid to have to have read those Confessions of Faith and and believe that these men actually wrote down what they believed in the Confessions. Um, I mean, they, they must have just been a bunch of charlatans who were trying to deceive all of us by writing the things they did. Uh, you know, and I'm, as I'm listening to Dr. Flowers, um, man, am I ever confused because here he's a, he, he has a PhD. He's got a one degree higher than the one I have. And um, boy, he's just got thousands of followers. And you know, can so many people be wrong? And, and can he be wrong if all these people are, are believing what he's saying? And, um, you know, he's just having a powerful impact. So, you know, I've just come to the conclusion that th there wasn't a single Calvinist in the last 500 years who, who understood, or 400 and whatever years, uh, who really understood what they believed. They, they, uh, they must have really thought they believed something different from what they believed because... I mean, they wrote all this stuff down in their confessions, and and according to what Dr. Flowers is saying, they didn't really believe any of this stuff. Um, for example, uh, he he tells us that that what Calvinists believe when they talk about the sovereignty of God is that that God uh, meticulously causes all of the sin that happens in the world, and he'll quote John Piper. I mean, you know, if he can quote John Piper and if he can quote R.C. Sproul uh, about these things, then, uh, you know, he must be right. And, and he'll, he'll quote Piper and, and he's convinced and he's convincing me that, that man, Piper believes that when a, when a child is molested and, and, and look, I, I, I think Dr. Flowers is right in using that emotionally charged example. Because you couldn't talk about something that's less emotionally charged 
and get your point across. And so you have to you have to think about the most gruesome thing you can possibly think of, and then talk about God ordaining that and God causing that. And and He'll convince you if you listen to Him, without thinking. Uh, he'll convince you that, yeah, God caused, he put the thought into the person's mind, he put the desire into the person's mind to, to molest a child, and he caused that child molestation. That's what Calvinists believe. You know, they, they must have been off, out of their gourd when they wrote, when they wrote that, that when God decreed all that he decreed, that does, make, not, does not make him the author of evil. He, they must have been really confused when they wrote that he doesn't have fellowship with any in sin. They must have been really confused when they wrote that God does not violate free will. They must have been really confused when they said God uses second causes, sometimes causes which are contrary to his, dec his de declared will to accomplish his purpose. They, they must have really been confused when they wrote those things because what Dr. Flowers is saying that Calvinists believe and what these Calvinists say Calvinists believe are two completely different things. In fact, in my whole 50 years of being a Calvinist, I don't think there was ever a time that I ever met a Calvinist. Now, there were some hyper-Calvinists along the way, uh, but obviously they didn't believe what Calvinists have confessed to believe, or they wouldn't be hyper-Calvinist. But I never met a single Calvinist who ever understood with the keen insight that Dr. Flowers has about what Calvinists believe, contrary to what he's been told many, many, many times about what Calvinists believe, um, but, but the keen insight that he has about what Calvinists really believe. We, we, you know, we don't believe what we say we believe. We, what we really believe is that God meticulously, like a puppeteer, God meticulously causes everything that comes to pass so that God is indeed the author of sin. And he does have fellowship. You know, God is the one who puts that pride into our into our hearts god is the one who who causes us to to do evil things because we believe god is just a, a malevolent being who doesn't care anything about holiness or righteousness but but all he cares about is the manifestation of his own glory um and that has nothing to do with the manifestation of his holiness. Um, so, you know, again, Dr. Flowers must be right because, you know, he's, he's got a PhD and he's got all those followers. And, you know, he used to be a Calvinist, he says, <laughs> if you can believe that. Um, and, and so, he, you know, I'm sure he's right in all of those thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Calvinists who have lived uh, since 1618 and 19. All of them, all of them, um, just were really confused about what they believed because they stated things that Dr. Flowers is now telling us just aren't, aren't true. Um, and, you know, in addition to that, I've, I've seen Dr. Flowers talk about the fact that Calvinists don't believe that, 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 um, there is any provision made for any sinner, and that that if sinners, according to the Calvinist, if a sinner goes to hell, it's because God didn't make any provision for him. And I want to talk in our next video about uh, what's wrong with limited atonement, and we'll we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but um, you know, you read people like um, A. A. Hodge, for an example. I'd like for you to look up what he, what he wrote. It's in his. Um, um, Outlines of Theology, and it's under the extent of, of, the, of the death of Christ. And this is what he wrote. The design of Christ's death being to secure salvation of the salvation of his own, own people, incidentally to the accomplish of that, accomplishment of that end, it comprehends the offer of that salvation freely and honestly to all men on the condition of their faith. 
no man is lost for the want of an atonement, or because there is any other barrier in the way of his salvation than his most free and wicked will. And this man claimed to be a Calvinist. Believe it or not, this is what he thought Calvinists believed. But Dr. Flowers tells us that Calvinists believe there is no provision made for the non-elect, and if they go to hell, it's just because Jesus didn't die for them, and they don't believe because God has um, determinatively caused them to be lost. And, man, if that's what Calvinists believe, then count me out. You know, I, I really thought I understood what Calvinists believe. I, I really thought that when, um, when they said in the second head of doctrine of the canons of Dort, this is the initial statement of Calvinism. This is what, you know, they should have known what, what, what Calvinists believe since they were claiming to be Calvinists, and yet they wrote, listen to what they wrote, that how confused can you be? They, they wrote, the death of the Son of God is the only and most perfect sacrifice and satisfaction for sin and is of infinite worth and value abundantly sufficient to expiate the sins of the whole world. And yet Dr. Flowers must be, he must be right, he's got that PhD, and uh, it, it, I guess he didn't study Greek or anything like that because he doesn't seem to know it, and he doesn't really know a lot of other stuff, but he got the PhD, and um, so we got to believe that he's right, and he's got all those followers, and can so many people, can so many people really be wrong? And so when he tells us that Calvinists don't believe that the work of Christ is sufficient to save every sinner um, who will ever believe the gospel, then we have to believe what he says. And, and the only ones who believe there's a, an abundant and completely valuable uh, sacrifice made for sinners, the only, one that, the only ones that believe that are the, are the provisionalist, the, his group. Um, and so we just, you know, we're just... Um, if you're a Calvinist, you're just really confused because, you know, some of you people have stated these things that you believe, and I guess you really think that's what Calvinists believe, but <laughs> Dr. Flowers is right. Shoot, who are we to disagree? Um, and then, you know, he I heard him today. He, he's saying that Calvinists don't believe in free will. Um, we, we just believe people are robots and um, that, you know, God does, doesn't can't leave us to our own decisions. Um, it's like, you know, you put food in front of a child and you can force them to eat it or you can just leave, the, leave it to them, to them to eat it or not eat it. And uh, that's the way God does things. He doesn't force people like the Calvinists believe he forces people against their wills. Um, because, you know, we don't, we're just robots. We're, we're puppets. And, and um, so, you know, that's what Calvinists believe. You know, God pulls the strings and we jerk and we do what God causes us to do by his meticulous determinism. And uh, there are no free choices, according to Calvinists. Uh, you know, I know what Calvinists have written over the years. Um, and I know they really think that when sinners come to Christ, they do so freely and willingly um, and, re and embrace Christ as he is offered in the gospel. I know that's what the confession says, but, you know... Can Dr. Flowers really be wrong if he's got that Ph.D. and all those followers? Uh, you, you know, think about that. So, so I, I have to confess that even though I thought I was a Calvinist because I believe these other things that Calvinists teach and have taught for centuries now, um, you know, I, if God, Dr. Flowers is right, I, I guess I'm just not a Calvinist. And uh, so we're going to talk next time about, uh, about what's wrong with limited atonement because, um, you know, we, we, we really need to get that straight. So um, I, hope, I hope you'll reconsider if you've, if you've thought you're a Calvinist all this time. Um, just listen to Dr. Flowers and he'll get you straight because he knows better than what Calvinists know about what Calvinists believe. Um, you know, he's got that PhD and so he must be right. And um, so you, you, know, you need to pay attention to Dr. Flowers uh, because he, he's got all those followers and 
you know, thousands and thousands of people can't be wrong. So uh, I just wanted to confess that, that um, you know, I've been wrong for the last 50 years, and um, I'm, I'm going to become a pr provisionalist uh, because, you know, I just don't like to think about God causing wicked people to, to rape and molest little children. Uh, that really doesn't seem like God to me. And I don't like to think about God um, forcing people against their will. Uh, you know, he's, he's going to drag them kicking and screaming, according to the Calvinist, into, into heaven whether they want to be saved or not. And I guess, you know, if they, if they want to be saved, they can't be saved unless God has chosen them. And so, you know, I, I guess Dr. Flowers must be right. So, you know, just, you know, I, I hope I haven't disappointed any of you. Some of you have, you know, appreciated my ministry. But listen, I, you know, Dr. Flowers, <laughs> he's got to be right. Uh, in spite of the fact that you know, I've never, ever met another Calvinist or uh, who, who believed what he says Calvinists believe, but he got the Ph.D. So isn't that cool? Um, for any of you who are so gullible that you believe anything I just said for the last 15 or 20 minutes, um, please don't believe anything I said because I didn't mean a word of it. I, I think that Dr. Flowers is a dangerous man who is leading thousands and thousands of people astray with his heresy. Um, but it was fun to make fun of him. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this. May God richly bless you.